Welcome to Live from Dennis's House, only on 474 The Mix, where the music matters. I'm your host, Dennis Morgillo, and each week we transport you back in time to a simpler time to a happier time. When Men Were Men and Close Encounters of the Third Kind was a popular movie about aliens and not how you would describe your romantic date with Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> you say, that, <laughs> that was my homage to Johnny Carson because I was watching a Johnny Carson documentary this past weekend and I wanted to write a Johnny Carson kind of monologue joke. And uh, I that think was that uh, was yeah. something yeah, he would have said. Yeah. Right, don't you think? Yes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's very good. May a uh, rabid wolverine make a nest in your sister's shorts. Uh, bim scala bim. So, all right. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to transport you back to 1977, back to your basement, your bedroom, your rec room, attic, wherever you hung out listening to your vinyl albums. So dust off those old records and get ready for some fun memories. Today, we are spotlighting the 1977 classic album, Bat Out of Hell by Ooh. Meatloaf. Yes. All right, let's meet the crew now. I got my sidekick and co-host, Cha-Cha. Hey. My head writer, Stephen Bellow. Hi, gang. And the musical director and band leader, Dee Dee Pye. How y'all doing? And now we're going to meet our first guest, Carly Morgan. Let's hear it for Carly Morgan. (laughs) So... Carly is a real live wire, as they say. She had a shocking experience this past summer, and it sparked a media frenzy. Carly was hit by lightning. Let's hear it for (laughs) getting hit by lightning. (laughs) All right. So I got to explain how this happened. Uh, Yeah, you're you're a little out of the picture. Can you move closer towards me? There we go. We're all in. She still seems a little out of the picture. She does. Why? How come... uh, yeah, but yeah. Move, move it. it. I'll move this all over. <laughs> ah, there she is. She's all in now. All right. So I was actually, I saw this on the news. I uh, It was like we were watching the yeah. news, and it said, girls hit by lightning, uh, something with motorcycles. And I said, oh, my God, I wonder if that's Carly. And then, bam, there's <laughs> Carly shows oh, up. Yeah. But it was on Long Island, and I don't know what you were doing on Long Island. <laughs> I don't know why you were washing your motorcycle in the rain, number two. <laughs> So can you shed a little light on this, how this all came? Oh, because let me uh, introduce her. Also, Carly is like the number one motocross girl in the entire world. Am I right on that? Second. Number two. Number two? Who's the first one? I don't know. Uh, Is it a boy or a girl? (laughs) A girl. Oh, so are you ranked against boys too or just against girls? Just girls. Oh, so that's that's not that impressive then. Oh. Just kidding. You're, You're awesome. sitting between four women. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get into Lightning Story, I got let's talk a little bit about the <laughs> mo- motocross. Now, you know that I've been motor- riding motorcycles half my life now, and I think I could beat you in a race. So I'm challenging you, Carly. Oh. Later on, after the show, we're going to race, so maybe this weekend, and uh, we're going to see how that works out. You're never going to learn, <laughs> or Christmas are Eve, you? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, enough of that. Let's get back to the lightning uh, here now. What were you doing in Long Island, and how did this all happen? Um, I was training for the national race in Tennessee, and my friends live in Long Island, and their dad was training me for like to do good at the race. And one morning before we were going to practice, I was outside washing my bike, but it was only drizzling, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't hear any lightning. Or, I mean thunder, and I didn't see any lightning, so I like thought it was going to be fine, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the lightning came and hit the power washer rod that I was holding. Wow. wow. So and so it didn't hit you directly. It hit the rod, that, the washer that you were holding? Yeah, and then it blew it out of my hands. Whoa, Whoa. my goodness. And then, so tell us, what did that feel like? Um, I saw like a blue and white light right in my face my legs are like tingling my whole body was tingling and it was just really weird it was scary oh my goodness wow so and then and then what happened did you just like throw the thing oh it was blown out of your hand but then were you screaming and yeah i was calling screaming for bloody you know, Carly, Dennis, <laughs> <was she> screaming? <laughs> oh my i was God. screaming bloody murder my my sister and my brother and my sister's two friends who were helping me train saw it they were sitting right in the shed next to where i was washing the bike they saw the whole thing 
Um, I kind of froze for a couple of minutes because I kind of was, I was in shock. I yeah, didn't really that, know what yeah. happened, but I did. So I, after it was out of my hands, I ran in there. They called their mom. Their mom called the ambulance, and then they took me to the hospital. Wow! Wow! So, and apparently, nothing happened to you. You had no uh, lasting effects. Nothing. Nothing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm sure you've heard all of these before, but like, do you glow in the dark now or anything like that? You don't need a light night light anymore. No. <laughs> Nothing like that. Did you get superpowers or anything? No. You would think you'd be number one motocross after this, right? <laughs> uh, so that is very That's exciting, yeah, weird, and crazy stuff, as I say. So, did you, like, play the lottery at least the next day or something? Because, like, the chances of getting hit by lightning is very rare. Yes. Unless you stand in the rain holding a metal thing washing your motorcycle. <laughs> then it goes up dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, I'm, I'm glad that you are still here, Carly. Yes, yeah, and absolutely. Nothing uh, happened to you. And um, glad you can come on the show now. So, is there anything else that you want to talk about about this? Anything exciting happen because of this have you been on any other talk shows uh the news oh besides that but i mean did like uh david letterman or um miley cyrus have you on uh, any other <laughs> show <or anything>? no <laughs> so well before you go now because i was going to dismiss carly because she is a child and this is adult humor well Immature adult humor, right, I should yeah, say. Yes. But um, there's something that I wanted to talk about, and I think Carly could uh, learn a lesson from this, too. So I think we'll let her stay for this next segment. What do you think? I, I, <laughs> we'll see I don't know. <laughs> Sharon, you're the guardian. What do you think? Yeah, she can stay. <laughs> All right, just for okay. this one segment, because I wanted to talk about this. Now we're going to go right into the Man About Town segment, which I do each week, and I discuss the crazy, exciting adventures that I have the week prior. And right. this okay. exciting week, I, it was my daughter's uh, birthday, and we were going on a birthday party to some <laughs> dance place like an hour away, right? So I was stuck in the car with four teenage <laughs> girls, right? And I'm sure you know this. Um, my daughter just got a CD from J. Cole. Do you know who J. Cole is? Yeah. Of course, right? I bet nobody else here knows who J. Cole is. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I still don't So know. my daughter was raised properly, and I taught her all about good music. So she knows good music, but she's still a teenage girl, and she doesn't. She can't be a freak and ostracized by telling all her friends, oh, listen to this Jimi Hendrix song right. here. <laughs> no, you got to assimilate and go with the flow. So um, she's trying to... You know, influence me now and tell me how good J. Cole is. So she played the CD for me, and I was saying each song is worse than the next one. And <laughs> this is not because I'm an old, out of touch guy. It's, you know, because I've always had my finger on the pulse of the nation, Absolutely. as you know. I, I and know. that I've like every kind of music from the 20s <laughs> swing, jazz, rock, punk, rap, everything I like except the current day situation we have here. It's a situation. And yes. And I explained her, oh, because the songs were so bad. They're so untalented. And they're saying the N-word 50 times per song. And I was like, this is, what was I saying? This is <laughs> Yes, this is out of control. This is terrible. <laughs> so then I explained to them. I said, listen, girls, this is what the deal is. Every generation needs music that their parents hate mm -hmm. you guys don't even like this music you just you liked <laughs> <laughs> you like miley cyrus but you couldn't go with that because i said oh yeah miley cyrus is cool you can't like my music because it's my music and i explained to them that i felt the same way but fortunately when i was a kid i had great music that my parents hated i had uh keith richards uh, sid vicious Marilyn Manson, Alice Cooper, who my parents were terrified of and hated. And that made me Ozzy love it Osborne. all. Yes, yeah. exactly. I loved it so much more. So I explained to them that that's what you're doing now. This is the closest <laughs> thing you got now is because these, uh, you know, these criminals who have, you know, CDs out that you feel your parents hate this. So it's something that you're going to call your own. And for the first time in my life, Four teenage girls actually kind of agreed with me. They said, oh, you have a good point. Wow. And one of the girls even said, I, this was an important trip. I think I'm going to go home and reflect on my life <laughs> and see what's going on here. So 
Um, that was the most important thing I did all week. I got uh, through to some teenage girls, but it doesn't matter because they listen to the same crap anyway. Right. So. <laughs> but what are you going to do? That's that's all they got. So. Carly's got some more stuff that <laughs> works than that. You should be in my car. Are you oh. a fan of Fetty Wap as well? Yeah. See, I knew it. Oh, <laughs> and I bet your parents hate it. Yeah. Exactly. So. Aunt Sharon doesn't. Do I well, like it? <laughs> she doesn't know what she's doing back there. Either. <laughs> so, see, but so I think we have two options here. One, someone comes out with good music that kids can like. Or two, parents pretend to like their kids' crappy music and then they'll go on to something else. <laughs> so, that's all we got here. What do you think of this? I agree with you 100%, <laughs> but I can't even pretend. I can't. Uh, I get hostile in the car. I do. Uh, it, it aggravates me. You get hostile in the car a lot. Well, that's, that, that's a whole other That's a whole new show. That we, uh, we got lost, and the other girls told me <laughs> you were cursing me because we had to take two cars since there were so many girls. No. And Dennis! Oh. No. Dennis! You no. made a wrong turn! <laughs> that's not what happened. <laughs> That's not what happened. You left me. Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> all right. So, all right. That's uh, that's all we got for now. Uh, that Carly can stay for. So we're going to <laughs> we're, uh, we're going to dismiss Carly, and then oh, we're gonna move on to, to more. And so that's uh, have a big hand for Carly Morgan. Thank you. Now, stay out of the rain, Carly. Yeah. All right, welcome back. And now, something else I want to talk about. I was listening to the radio, and I heard Christy Brinkley was on the radio. Ooh, what? And, yes, she was on uh, the Howard Stern show, actually. Oh. And um, she was, the funniest thing, though, is she was saying literally every five minutes, <laughs> but she was saying it like the Queen of England. Literally. You know? And we always do that, right? I love that. When, someone, when anyone says literally, I said, you mean literally? And I couldn't believe that she was saying it. But the funniest thing that she said, was that what every wife of a rock star ever said since Yoko, right? I didn't know who they were. I never heard oh, of yeah, them before. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. Yoko, oh, yeah. the Beatles? Uh, John Lennon? I never heard of them. Oh. No, 1968, yeah. they weren't really that popular, <laughs> so I can understand. <laughs> the same thing Christy Brinkley said, I had never heard of Billy Joel. And uh, this was at the top of his career. Yeah. Right. Everybody in the right. world the heard 80s. of Billy right, Joel, right? right. right? And she said, no, she didn't. So yeah. Yeah. that's all I wanted to say about her. Okay. <laughs> and now, my inspirational message of the week. You know how I like to do this each week now? Yes. Oh, you do? I yes. Last this. week or the week before was specially aimed towards women, remember? Yes. Op- talking is optional. Yeah. That's the opposite so of bad. inspirational. <laughs> and what was it last week? It was something equally was... brilliant last week. Oh, last week it was that all kids artists. are artists until they're told they're not. Right. Yeah. See, see, I'm so brilliant. Even now, better. this week is everything happens for a reason. Oh, and sometimes wow. that reason is you are a dumbass and you make poor choices. <laughs> there you go. That's a reason. That's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> That is That's so inspirational. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, it's also getting to that time of year now where I have to make my yearly uh, statement about Christmas <laughs> and the holidays and all this kind of stuff. And my statement is that if you say happy holidays to me instead of Merry Christmas, mm-hmm. I will punch you right in the throat. <laughs> oh, wow. <That laughs> I celebrate Christmas and <laughs> both of the country celebrates christmas i don't want to hear nothing else like on the news there's all this stuff about starbucks cups and all this nonsense but uh, there's a, a shopping mall in long island roosevelt field who in their santa display didn't have any christmas stuff they said it's a holiday display and i was like what holiday takes pictures with santa besides christmas you <laughs> And (laughs) I went berserk. So therefore, my plea to everybody is that don't shop there. Go shop where they celebrate Christmas and let the seven holiday shoppers shop at Roosevelt Field (laughs) and the other 350 million Christmas shoppers shop elsewhere. Very good. I like that too. Yes. All right. (laughs) Enough of that now. All right. We are now going to cha-cha with the word on the street. Gossip columnist to the stars. That's me. Okay. What do you got for us this week? Well, let's see. What do I want to lead off with? Well, first, I just want to tell you that, did you know that Christy Brinkley is dating John Cougar Mellon? Oh, yes, I do, because I heard her on the radio. Really? Does she know who he is? Wait, (laughs) she never heard of him. (laughs) She she literally never heard of him. (laughs) (laughs) Is he a singer? I didn't know. (laughs) Wow. That's perfect. Very good. That's good. So... 
Well, that's it. it? Com- no, oh, okay. I actually want to talk about. You know, we were talking last week about Gwen Stefani and yes. Blake Shelton. Yeah. Well, it turns out that there's more to the story that Gavin Rossdale was actually cheating on. Uh, um, what's her name? Gwen Stefani. Yeah. Thank you, Gwen Stefani, with their nanny. <sighs> That happens a lot. It's always a nanny. And yes. he was cheating on her when she supposedly was pregnant with their last child. Ooh. Yeah. So, you know, I there know. You, you can't put too much stock into these people because they're just really yep. terrible people. Yeah. So, But that does happen a lot. That actually, yeah. you know, I mentioned this, that we might talk about it, that one of our guests that canceled on us <laughs> actually did the same thing. And his initials are... Oh. I'm not going to say. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you took the high road. Everybody man. got nervous, yes. Normally, I don't take the high road. I never take Are the high road. Oh, but, yes, I am aware oh. of this. But I am, <laughs> as the new me, I'm going to take the high road. He's awesome. And, uh, normally I would, all right? Normally, I would say uh, his initials are Rand Hubiak. Yes. But <laughs> no, oh. no, no, I'm not. It's not Rand, no, but I'm just giving Rand. an example of what I would do. <laughs> I would say his initials are, but then I'd say the full name. But I'm not going to do that here. So let's I'm carry sorry. on. Can't believe he just did that to you. <laughs> I I just work here. I don't know. And this is a really big story, but a lot of people might not know who this person is. I'm thinking you guys don't watch The Housewives of the OC. <laughs> well, What's wrong no, with that? But, but anybody can relate to this story. There's a man on the show named Brooke Ayers, Ayers, and he lied the whole season about having cancer. And it turns out that he actually does not have cancer. Wow. If that that's the hospital, fast lane, the highway yes. to hell right there for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Not cool. yeah. Completely fabricated <laughs> PET scans one. and reports, and or, and he does not have cancer. <laughs> the free wigs. The hospital for the free that he supposedly <laughs> had all bag. this treatment, which is a hospital in L.A. Said we have never treated this man, uh, and let uh, alone for cancer. Yeah, he's the worst guy to ever live. Yeah. I hate that guy. Yeah, and that you know what else? He actually came on to his girlfriend's daughter. pregnant daughter at a party. And you know what, what he said? Tool. Oh. <laughs> they call me Girth Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Swear, I didn't make that up. Nope, nope, really. nope. Pretty good line, actually. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> feel free to use that at your next party, uh, Stephen. <laughs> you put on a cowboy hat. Wow. Oh, that is ridiculous. So. Yeah. Uh, and that's all I have for you. Ah, very good. Good stuff. Awesome. All right, thank very you. Good. Now we're going to go to Dee Dee, making the scene. Everybody loves Dee Dee. Thank you. <laughs> it's my birth month. It's your birth month. Yes. It's our birth month. And today is your little buddy's uh, my birthday, My girl, right? my pie. Happy birthday, Laura. Happy birthday, Laura. I love Laura. her. Yeah. She's partying. Good for her. <laughs> at least I hope she is. I don't know. <laughs> Anywho, who? Uh, I was out at McLoon's Supper Club on Saturday. I can't remember where I was Friday or even Sunday or anything else wow, because I had weekend. a really wow, good time good. Saturday. <laughs> everything else has been great. Anyway, my favorite acoustic player, um, James Maddock, was performing. And uh, I, I, I don't stalk him per se, <laughs> but I do go to various of his shows whenever I can. And he's very gracious, spends time with people after the show, taking pictures and, you know, chit-chatting and whatnot. And uh, Laura, my pie, stole me a set list from under the drum kit that they had left there, and he autographed it for me. Ooh, I should have brought it. Oh, well. it? Anyway, he's got a new album out called The Green, and it's got some really cool music on it, really great stuff. He had a full band show the other night, and it was fantastic. And Arlen Phyllis, this guy, I had never heard of him. I would heard his name on you know the radio and things but i never actually seen him and he opened it he did a full band opening set i could have just sat there and listened to him the whole night this is um come sunday morning it's his acoustic cd that he's got out it's fantastic so these are two artists that i highly recommend they uh they come to mcloon's um maybe two or three times a year so if you can catch them in asbury park they're a really good show and uh they also participate in the light of day festival in january in asbury park which is really cool and that's nice. pretty much it. The rest of the time, I was obliterated and have no clue what the hell happened. <laughs> so now let me ask you, did you get these guys to come on to the show, these two guys here? 
Oh, uh, I am messaging them as we speak. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, then no, I will the edit out. Would be yes. I will edit out their CDs until they come on, oh, and then we'll display them. Oh. <laughs> we're never right. gonna host the Oscars. I don't know. So we're just oh. never yeah. going. All right. Thank you, Dee Dee. Now we're going to Stephen Bellow and shed some light and some levity on the show now. Welcome, Stephen. Thank Hi, you. Bells. How's and, uh, it going? Carly's gone, right? Carly's gone. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you call a guy that beats his wife with cheap Swedish furniture? What? Ikea Turner. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> it's a rock and roll. Get it? Okay. Get it? I got Ikea it. Turner, I got it. Ikea. I got it. All right. That's much, much more yes. family friendly. Yeah. Domestic violence. Radio oh, yeah, that's friendly. Really family yes, friendly. Yes. Yeah, that's nice. That's, <laughs> At least it's not perfectly. October. So. Yes. No cursing. <laughs> so, all right. All right, now let's welcome our next guest, Rand Hubiak. Yeah. All right, hey, Rand, you've been on the show. You know how this works. Yeah. Oh, it's so, different now, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Last time you were here, we were still at the Ed Sullivan Theater. Last now time I was uh... the prettiest one here. <laughs> <laughs> now I like got to take a number. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rand. <laughs> You Must get, be like, the jacket. You get your, uh, your eyebrows done? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So Rand has a new CD coming out. Yeah. Like what? Tomorrow or something? Well, the or? official release date is the 17th, but I'm picking up the hard copies tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I bet you are, Panama <laughs> Red. <laughs> I can say that about anything, anything, and people will laugh at it. We don't know why, but it sounds funny. So tell us about this CD, uh, and you can show should all should, your uh, stuff right. you got. Yeah, yeah just speak yeah, yeah. into the mic, please. And uh, this is it. There uh, it is. So yeah, it's called the uh, the Bleach Bones of Titans. I don't. This is the only hard copy I have, the framed copy. Right. Um, it's sort of like an homage to early '70s Brit rock. So we got like some glam, very David Bowie, T-Rex stuff, uh, Yellow Brick Road era, Elton John, some prog stuff, kind of like. Yes, or early Genesis, and some kind of proto-punk stuff that's reminiscent of uh, not really English, but like New York Dolls or the Ramones. Oh, so, nice. Well, you've heard the one. Of you've course, heard yes. uh, the Duggar song. <laughs> so I understand you're going to be performing that song later too with well, your not, band. Back no, we'll, there? we'll do the uh, the Christmas song. For oh, you. okay. With uh, I, I, although we rewrote it guys. just for you, as uh, why did you leave me alone on the holidays? Now? <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for a throat punch Rand. <laughs> okay I <laughs> uh, uh, so you know that means he likes you right? <laughs> if he treats me like Tina Turner yes. that's how you know <laughs> yep exactly <laughs> So what else have you got going on? What else? You want to talk more about this? I don't have any the questions album? lined up for you. Yeah, well, talk about the album. Talk uh, about your what you've been doing since the last year. Or it's just all been albums. I mean, we put out two EPs this year, uh, six songs each. No, seven and then six, right? And then this is a, an 11-song album. So, wow. Uh, yeah, we're very prolific. Yeah, we've been busy this year. And, you know, we've, wrote, we've, we've written the first, you know, new uh, Christmas classic since uh, that What's-Her-Face, Mariah Carey song. Yeah. Nobody's written a good Christmas song in 50 years That's except true. for that one. I usually hate her, but I love that song. Yeah. So, but we're we're going to reusurp that spot and we've created the newest Christmas classic. And what is this called? It's Why did you leave me alone on Christmas? Oh, okay. <laughs> or the holidays. That's the flip side. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Starbucks version. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it a lot. <laughs> so you, you want to introduce so the, your friends back there? Okay. Well, we got my drummer Paul Hi, Paul. Well, Paul is everybody's I, drummer, though. I mean, he yeah. is the go-to drummer of Central New Jersey. Yes. Uh, yeah, with we've we've got. Oh no, Jock's not here. Yeah. Why? What's he doing um, tonight? I believe he's pursuing his alternate career as a porn star. It's, uh, <laughs> he's he's got this niche market for micro penises <laughs> fetish. Uh, are we allowed to say micro penis fetish on the air? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> How come he's allowed to say stuff like that? that because it's clinical. Used, yes, it's a clinical term. clinical term, term oh. is much different. I teach the MCAT, damn it. <laughs> all right, Rand, let's get back to you now. All right, all right. And uh, what else you got to talk about or show us back there? What? <laughs> I didn't. I 
<laughs> Didn't think you were going to ask me anything beyond talking about the meatloaf album. <laughs> All right, yeah, so we're going to go right into anything. that then. Okay. If you got nothing else to say about your own I've, stuff. Well, uh, no, I have nothing interesting to say okay. except that it's an awesome album and everybody should buy yes, it because albums cost a lot Rand to make. Rand is a great singer, yeah. keyboardist, yeah, songwriter, and I've had the pleasure to sit in on guitar with him a couple times. Yeah, you did and a kick-ass job, Besides, too. you know, the, the fact if you get past uh, the fact <laughs> that I have to call him Miss Ross from time to time because he sends me 10,000 texts and key changes and M&Ms and uh, chilled water at a certain temperature. But <laughs> the great stars are all like that. So, uh, <laughs> And he's already done two costume changes for this show alone. <laughs> yeah, but you, look what I settled on. Look what I settled on. I settled I like for the most easy going there you thing. go you look a little like the Fonz today i nice. do look a little like the Fonz. yes i love the Fonz. all right so now we'll uh if you think of anything you want to talk about just bring it up but in the meantime we're going to start talking about meatloaf yeah all right pull up that album there rand mm, meatloaf <laughs> <laughs> where, do you, where do you want me to hold it there yeah just or... hold it there just don't block me and now <laughs> this album well, just interject. Anybody who knows anything about it, wants to talk about it, just interject as I'm going, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit. This album came out in 1977, October to be exact, and it was in the midst of the punk revolution. And big, over-the-top stuff like this was looked down upon and criticized. And uh, this this kind of music was just like everyone was saying, oh, this is going to go nowhere. Nobody's ever going to buy this. It's a big waste of time and money. And they were uh, rejected by uh, everybody. Everybody. <laughs> and I heard a joke. People were saying that they were creating new record companies just so they could reject this album. <laughs> and <laughs> But then, then when it came out, Oh, my God. It was ridiculous. It became one of the best-selling albums in the history of recorded music. Sold over 43 million copies worldwide. It's on the Rolling Stone list, 500 best albums of all time. It's been certified platinum 14 times over. And it has spent 485 weeks on the UK charts. Amazing. That is amazing. This album went on to become one of the most influential and iconic albums of all time, and its songs have remained classic rock stables. Who doesn't know these songs? Uh, I bet we could all sing along to every song on this album. You got uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Everybody knows that mm -hmm. one. Two Out of Three Ain't Bad, which we'll be performing later on. Uh, Heaven Can Wait. You Took the Words Out of My Mouth, etc., etc. And... Um, the album is actually, it's the brainchild of Jim Steinman, who's the composer, along with Meatloaf. And um, Jim Steinman was influenced greatly by Phil Spector, Bruce Springsteen, who you can hear a lot of uh, in this oh, album, yeah, I believe. The, uh, the opening piano sequence right, and to, the to our three is basically um, Thunder Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this whole album, it, it started out, Steinman had this concept for like a space age uh, Peter Pan uh, play. And it was called Neverland, but that never went anywhere, as you would imagine. <laughs> so uh, him and Meatloaf got together. And uh, as you know, Meatloaf was in the movie Rocky Horror. He yes, played... Um, and he was a Broadway. Broadway. Yes. No, what was his name in oh. the... F Eddie. 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 He played That's Eddie, the biker in that movie. So um, this album, it was just an amazing album. Hold it up some more. You don't have to hold it up every time uh, until we get ready to smell <laughs> it. But it was produced by Todd Rundgren. And Todd Rundgren plays a lot of the guitars on here. Even the uh, motorcycle sounds, yes. that's yes. actually Todd yeah. playing it on the guitar, which well, I found quite amazing. He's also part yeah. of the, uh, the backing vocals along with Rory Dodd. Yes, and uh, they actually they have some of Bruce's guys in here. Roy oh, yeah. Bitten and Max Weinberg are in there. Kasim Sultan uh, is on there, too, who's a friend of Stevens from Staten Island. Staten Island boy, yes. You're going to get him on the show, too? Absolutely. Probably All right. Tomorrow. And Edgar Winter plays on it. And, of course, who is singing in Paradise by the Dashboard Light with uh, Meatloaf? What is the girl's name? Anybody know? Mm. I know. Ellen Foley. Uh. And, of course... Who does the play-by-play -play on that song? It's Jim Phil Steinman. Rizzuto. <laughs> no, Phil no. Rizzuto. Oh. Yes, the legendary shortstop for the New York Yankees, Phil Rizzuto. That song is so funny. It's yes. about teenage romance in the back seat or front seat of a car and uh, all this stuff. And it's just so funny that, you know, we've heard these songs 10 million times. But 
you know, do you remember back when the first time you heard it and it first came out and it was so fresh and new and uh, it was just, it was unlike anything else of its time. And it, it's a classic album and I give it five stars. Yes, yes. Three thumbs and five stars. <laughs> well, hey. I don't know if you know, but that's my favorite album of all time. Really? Yep. Uh, Absolutely. Oh, Even I more than Robin Thicke, Blurred Lines? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, really? I'm going to give it to me, <laughs> love. I actually wore out two cassette tapes <laughs> listening uh, to that. Very that nice. That is my all-time favorite album yes. of all time. So let's start smelling it and passing it around while I'll give a little more facts and anyone who else wants to talk into it. Mm, very nice, very nice, very nice. Is this mine? Yes. Nothing is yours. <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely mine. Smell yeah, it does. Yeah, smell it. Definitely, it. It definitely <laughs> smells like it belongs to Cha Cha. This this album was recorded where Bearsville Studio in upstate New York and around New York. It was actually even recorded some parts of it in West Orange, New Jersey. Wow. That amazing. Well, well, actually, you know, quick uh, side bit is. Um, Phil Rizzuto, when he did this, he didn't know what they were going to use that for. He didn't know there was any <laughs> yeah, sexual yeah. intention behind right, right, right. what uh, he was singing for. I heard he that just too, went yeah, to yeah. to do it. Um, him and his wife were at, at a wedding that I, I, I also do photography uh, that I did. I photographed, and he actually does not like the song. He was when he when he Probably was embarrassed, still, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when mm -hmm. he was still around, but he did, was not a fan of the song because he didn't know what they were actually going to use it for. See, now I actually heard them talking about it, and they're saying that's crap. That he knew exactly what he was doing, but he's just using it as an excuse now. Right, uh, like Robin else. Thicke told his wife he didn't know that Miley <laughs> Cyrus was going to twerk him on the Music Awards. And Gavin Rossdale had no idea the nanny was going to fall learn? on top of him in this bathtub yeah, either, right? Exactly. So, uh, all right, now, before we end the show, we're going to talk about what's happening in the world. And I happen to have an amazing news story here that I'm going to read to you. I found it the last moment. It was just hot off the presses. So I have to uh, read this one. I didn't memorize it yet or actually read it through. But one of two women caught on video groping and twerking on a man in a gas station in northeast D.C. has been arrested after an attack the victim said humiliated him. Oh. Ayana <laughs> Marie Knight, 22, of Las Vegas, was charged with third-degree sexual abuse, police said late Tuesday, explaining that an observant pedestrian alerted them of Knight's location. Blah, 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 blah. They're still looking for the second woman, blah, blah, blah. The video was released. And it shows a man waiting in a checkout line. Did anybody see this? No. Mm -hmm. It has a man waiting in a checkout line at a gas station uh, in Washington, D.C., and a woman in front of him begins to dance and rub her body against him. Don't you hate when that happens, Stephen? <laughs> and then a second woman, dressed in red, follows the man and appears to grope him repeatedly. Wow. This wow. reminds me of summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> <laughs> according, according to the police report, the women used force and grabbed the victim's groin and buttocks multiple times in a very aggressive manner, without his permission and without his consent. <laughs> the victim told News 4 he was humiliated by the tact. I was sexually assaulted, he said, asking that his name be <laughs> withheld. I felt 100% violated. I felt really humiliated also because when someone is just grabbing your body parts without your permission, no matter who it is, it's just a violation completely. So, and then um, he went out and he called the police, all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. But um, <laughs> the, a D.C. group that fights public sexual harassment and abuse said, this is no joke. It should not be taken lightly, said Je Jessica Raven. This is a prime example of the public sexual harassment and assault that people across our city experience on a near daily basis. And it's unacceptable. What do you think of that? <laughs> Didi, you said you don't I'm remember where you were this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> what day was that? Yeah. Oh, good one, Rand. Good. 
I was I was leading it in for somebody to come up with a good joke, and Rand pulls it out. Nice. Way to go, Rand. Nice Thank to meet you. Nice to meet you, Rand. <laughs> uh, yes, because you can see the double entendre here. The not the double entendre. The uh, what do they call that? Double standard. Double standard. The double standard. Yes. Absolutely. See, Rand yeah. knows all the words. You want a word, Rand will give it to you. He's uh, he's very smart. But I'm assuming the two women were not very attractive. Then. Well, <laughs> that's shocking right. for DC. Remember, we're in DC, okay. so. They weren't completely messes, but they, you know, <laughs> they, uh, it wasn't. They were attractive enough that a congressman enough. would pay for them, <laughs> right, right. but uh, not right. enough that Robin Thicke <laughs> would risk his marriage for them. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very eloquently put. That if you're online at a gas station and she starts <laughs> rubbing up on you, you know, it's fine. You know, what else are you going to do while you're sitting there online? Of course, not me, but uh, for somebody else, it might be enjoyable. <laughs> but you see the double standard, though, that if this happened to a woman, you would see oh, the outcry. Right, this man would have been arrested true. and beaten and put under the jail. But then again, <laughs> a man wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't right. really. Yeah, ma most men would have enjoyed that. So uh, <laughs> therein lies the double standard. So I'm all for the double standard, by the way. <laughs> just so it's what made this country great. <laughs> he's just accumulating points. <laughs> all right. So that's it. Rand, you got anything else you want to talk about before we nope. wrap this show up? <laughs> all right. I so already now... got to talk about Dee Dee. So. Yeah, there you go. Uh, excellent. <laughs> So uh, I got a lot of editing to do. I oh. tell you. I'm just trying to establish <laughs> chemistry before we sing. That's yes. A, yeah, so. this is going to be really, Sexual tension. We be are going to record rendition. an acoustic <laughs> yeah. version of Two Out of Three Ain't Bad. We've never played it before, and we have no idea what's going to happen, but it's going to come out awesome. I have faith. I do, too. All right. Thanks for joining us here on Live from Dennis's House, only on 474 The Mix, where the music matters. See you next week, and I'll be doing another classic album and behaving badly. Like me on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Check out my new website, DennisMojillo.com. And you can now watch us on all social media, on the radio, and on Cablevision Channel 77. Now, the one thing it makes me think of, do you know back in the 40s, there used to be um, ventriloquist acts on the radio? <laughs> How and why <laughs> was well, that? Well, you'd be listening to the program on one radio, and all of a sudden the voice would come from the other radio. Because the It'd biggest be star, right? The biggest star was like Edgar Bergen uh, and Charlie McCarthy, and it was a ventriloquism act, and they were on the radio. Think that one over. I am. All right. <laughs> That's all we got.